Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare and sometimes self-care. So if that is your vibe, please consider hitting subscribe and you know what time it is. It is time for July favorites. I feel like I haven't filmed one of these in a long time and I get to film it in my new house. So if you guys are so ready, give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started. <music> So I am just going to apologize in advance because for the next couple of videos, I'm pretty sure I'm going to say I'm sorry about my background. Um, I actually, you know, I just moved and I'm still kind of in the process of figuring out how things work, where things go, you know, actually unpacking the boxes, right? So this is sort of a temporary background right now. I kind of like it. It's a little bit minimal for me. Um, I kind of like it, um, but it's going to be kind of changing a little bit. I'm sure it doesn't bug you as much as it bugs me. So just putting it out there, like I am still figuring out my new background, uh, but let's jump right into the faves. So first up is the CeraVe Hydrating Toner. And I actually bought this um, actually a little bit before, like it was a week or two before I left for Greece. And I had just gone to Ulta to buy the travel size of the CeraVe Moisturizing Cream so I could take it with me on my trip. And my eyes immediately zoned in on this bottle. And I'm like, what is this? CeraVe has a hydrating toner. I was very excited. It is, I believe, a new product. And I was like, it was like no question on my mind. I was buying it. Um, and I wasn't really sure what to expect from it because you know I love a good hydrating toner. I have for many years. But really the only sort of like genre of skincare I've ever been able to find a really good one in is Korean skincare. You know, Korean skincare does hydrating toner really, really well. Like chef's kiss, right? They've nailed the concept of a hydrating toner. And I just have not found it in European skincare. I've not found it in like American skincare. I just really haven't found a good hydrating toner outside of that. So anyways, I bought it because I was excited, but you never know what to expect, right? And the first time I used it, I was like, I actually like this. Like, I actually like this a lot. This is like a really good hydrating toner. It has all the things that I like. It's that light, watery, quickly absorbed texture that can be layered up on the skin without building up thickness or stickiness. It actually is quite hydrating. And you know I have picky, thirsty skin. So it really does feel like it dives in deeply. As far as the texture goes, all of those things are wonderful. I do feel like sometimes with my like very, very, very most favorite K-Beauty toners, there is often an elegance that comes with the formula or with the texture or with the experience. This is a little bit lacking in that. And I'm really seriously just talking about how it feels on my skin, like how it penetrates my skin, the, the feeling of the texture between my fingers. I'm not even talking about what it does for the skin. This is just me being super picky, like a connoisseur of toners. It is lacking a little bit of that elegance, but that's a okay for me because this is an incredibly solid, hardworking, actually hydrating toner. Now true to the CeraVe name and really like that traditional CeraVe recipe, if you will, we do have ceramides in here. We have cholesterol, we have niacinamide, we have hyaluronic acid, really all of the things that ceramide banks on to help support a healthy skin barrier. And the formula feels like it is just like a really nice solid barrier supportive hydrating toner I think it's gonna work for dehydrated skin I think it's gonna work for all skin types really because it's got that really light quickly absorbed texture and I have to say for 200 milliliter of product at about I think I paid about $12 $12.99 maybe for this I think it's very affordable too and I love the fact that this was local for me instead of having to order something online or wait a really long time for a big order from overseas I can just you know in a pinch if I need a hydrating toner if you've seen my collection I probably don't but um if you know you need a hydrating toner you can go down to Ulta I'm sure this will start to be available at other drugstores too. Go down, pick this up. It's very affordable. It's a good, like I said, solid working toner. I was very surprised by this. It actually was a lot better than I expected it to be. And um, I've obviously used quite a bit of it because 
It's almost empty. So next up, I want to talk about the Beauty of Joseon Revive Eye Serum Ginseng Plus Retinol. This is actually a new release from Beauty of Joseon. This was sent to me by the brand. I was in Greece when they sent it to me. Um, so when I came back home, I had all these boxes to unpack. And when I unpacked this one, I was incredibly <laughs> excited. I was like, ooh, this looks so, so good. And I mean, the biggest reason why I was excited is because ginseng really is one of my favorite uh, K-beauty centric ingredients. It does um, so many wonderful things for the skin. It, it always, whenever I use any type of ginseng product, it always improves my complexion. It really gives me that healthy, lively, revived complexion, and it always seems to help reduce redness. I have a lot of natural redness on my face, and ginseng just naturally seems to help calm that and kind of even it out. And I was very excited to see ginseng in an eye cream product because I have a lot of natural redness underneath and on top of my eyelids. So I was very excited to see what ginseng could do for the eye area. All right, let's talk about retinol and retinol. <laughs> it feels really funny being like emphasizing it, but I just want to like uh, quickly point out that there is a difference here. And you may be seeing a lot of retinol products hitting the market because it's kind of like the new, the new kind of thing that is taking off in trends. And you may be like, is that just like a misspelling of retinol? Um, not quite. They are just a little bit different. So you may know that retinol, which is what you can get over the counter and it kind of is like uh, tretinoin, right? Tretinoin is a prescription grade um, retinoid and retinol is like that. It takes about um, two steps to convert from retinol, which is like a gentler version that you get over the counter, two steps to go to retinoic acid. Now retinol, spelled with an A, that actually only has one conversion step, meaning that it's gonna be more potent, maybe even more faster acting than retinol. Um, so that's really the big difference here. So if you're seeing those two different spellings, that's what you should expect. It's probably just a little bit more potent than retinol, but honestly, they both do still need to convert on the skin um, and they are going to be gentler than a tretinoin is. So I have been using this for about three weeks now because I know my videos seem like they're happening in real time, but I have actually been back from Greece a little bit longer than my release schedule with my video. So I have been using this for a while before my move and now after my move. And um, I really like it because I noticed some pretty immediate benefits with this one. And what I've really noticed is the natural redness that I have underneath my eyes, which can make me look really tired and sometimes even make me look a little bit like, like ill or sick right? Um, even though I'm not, I'm well rested. Just that natural redness does kind of like give that look to my face. I noticed that that natural redness is like, um, fading or it's just looking a little bit more healthy. You know, my, my under eye area is a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more alive and awake. As far as the fine lines and wrinkles, uh, I'm not so sure. <laughs> it's been a very short period of time for that benefit, but just for like the ginseng really helping to like wake, like awaken and revitalize my eye area, I think it's great. And I think it's definitely worth exploring if you're interested in the benefits that retinol and ginseng can bring. And I just wanna say, I am pretty excited that a Korean brand like Beauty of Joseon is dipping their toes in the pond of retinoids. You know, because as I always say, like I have been into K-Beauty for many, many, many years and I've seen how it has changed throughout the years. And as K-Beauty has become more and more global, you do see that it's bringing in more influences from outside sources outside of Korea. And I think that that's an interesting and good thing um, because way back when you would not have found any retinoids in K-Beauty at all like it was just not a thing um, at all and slowly we're starting to see some more products that are starting to introduce retinoids into into the products I just think it's a really lovely fusion and I just I love that there's so many options now and so I just wanted to say like you know retinoids are a little bit um, uncommon in K-beauty and I'm really excited to see like this fusion of like the traditional Korean ingredients like the ginseng mixed with um, more of that maybe Western influence with the retinol in here. Um, I just think it's a really cool fusion and I think it's a pretty exciting 
amazing product. So I wanted to start off with the two products this month that maybe you haven't seen a lot of because a good portion of this month's videos were actually filmed when I was on vacation in Greece and I had a limited amount of skincare, well limited. Uh, <laughs> I did overpack skincare for sure, but whatever I brought is what I had at my disposal. And of course I went on lots of treasure hunts in um, pharmacies all throughout the islands and the Peloponnese and in Athens. So I had a really like fun time like hunting out new skincare when I was in Greece. But I will say I've been talking about a lot of the same stuff because that's, you know, what has been in my skincare world lately. Now that I've come home, I'm sort of like rediscovering all the other stuff that I left behind. So this is going to be the portion of the video where I just kind of talk about some stuff you might have already seen if you've been watching those videos. If you haven't, I think they're kind of fun. They're a little bit different. You should definitely go check them out. So one of the products that I discovered on the road that made a really big difference in my skin is the Carez Probiotic Super Dose Face Mask. Now Carez is a Greek brand that's been around since like the 1950s. Uh, they're definitely a Greek heritage brand at this point that has definitely gone global. I'm sure that you've heard of them, um, but they do have their roots in Greece and they do have their roots in like more traditional Greek ingredients like yogurt. Um, and that's that is one of the main ingredients of this wash off mask. And that's definitely where we're getting some of that probiotic benefit from. Now this is a mask that's really um, meant to kind of help um, revive your skin, um, definitely help to strengthen um, your skin barrier, help with skin health, but also help to just give like a more refreshed, maybe even a little bit of a brighter appearance to your skin. It's all about skin health and rejuvenation really, which is exactly what my skin needed. Um, I discovered this about halfway through my trip when I was in Momnavasia and I had been getting a lot of sun exposure. I've been doing the very best that I could with all my sunscreen and my hats and my sunglasses, but you know, just being outside in the heat, in the sun for long hours at a time, it can be a little bit stressful on your skin. And I do think that it makes sense to build into your skincare routines after lots of sun exposure, just some like some good like skin barrier ingredients, some good nourishment, some good hydration, just anything that kind of helps de-stress and like pamper your skin to keep it in the best shape possible. And that's, I felt like what I needed in my skincare routine at the time. I had lots of hydration. I had really great, you know, moisturizing um, products, but I just needed that little extra pampering. And that's where the wash off mask came in. Um, I found this in a pharmacy and I was so lucky to find the mini because <laughs> at that point I had already bought quite a bit of skincare. My suitcase was getting a little bit hard to um, zip up and pack up when I was moving in between towns it was getting a little bit annoying, honestly. So I was really excited to find the mini. I bought two of the mini um, of this wash off mask. And the first time I used it, like I put it on my skin and I just love a good creamy wash off mask texture. It is something that like just really jives well with my skin. So as soon as I put it on, it just felt like really refreshing cooling, creamy, like comforting. I was like, oh yeah. And I just put it all over my hot skin <laughs> and I just let it infuse with my skin. It's not overly moisturizing, but there is a little bit of that balancing uh, benefit to it that just kind of like helps to, um, if you do have any dry areas, I think it helps to balance it out, but it's not so moisturizing. It doesn't infuse so much with your skin with moisture that like your oily areas are gonna feel thick. I don't think so. Um, I think it just feels really, really nice. And then I washed it off after about, I think it was like maybe like 12 or 15 minutes, I washed it off and like immediately my skin just looked so much fresher. So much fresher, like it just looked brighter. Do you know what I mean? When your skin looks a little tired, maybe it's a little bit dull, it's a little bit stressed out, and then all of a sudden it just looks perkier. It looks like a little bit more alive, a little bit brighter, a little bit healthier, maybe even a little bit more glowy. That's what I, I experienced with this mask. So I was sold from Use One. It really helped to revive my skin. Like I said, it was feeling a little stressed. It wasn't a big deal, but it was feeling a little bit stressed. So I really liked it and I continued to use it, you know, like a couple uh, days a week throughout the rest of my trip. And I've been using it, I actually used it this morning. I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> I love this. Um, it just reminds me how, how good of a wash off mask it is. Oh, and quickly, I just wanna mention something about the ingredients list of the Carez mask. Um, my ingredients list uh, does not contain any fragrance on it at all. But when I was looking at it at Ulta and Sephora, they are saying that there's fragrance in 
in it. So I am not sure if there's a difference between the countries. I don't know if like I have a new version and those are outdated ingredients lists. I do not know. Um, I can confirm the one that I'm using does not have fragrance, but I'm not sure what's going on with the current ingredients lists online. So like I said, I have been talking about a lot of the same products this month. I know because I have been away from home, but it really would not be a July 2022 favorites video right after my Greece trip if I didn't mention La Roche-Posay Wet Skin SPF and the Avene Very High Protection Fragrance Free Fluid. Now, like I said, I've been talking about this quite a bit because these were my core sunscreens that got me through my Greece trip. These had my back. And as I said before, you know, um, I was not prepared. <laughs> I was not prepared for Greece to be so sunny and so hot. Like I have to say, like I knew it was gonna be sunny and I knew it was going to be hot. Don't get me wrong, like I knew that. Like logically, I knew it, but I guess I just have not experienced anything quite like that before um, that I was able to really prepare myself for that and, and pack the appropriate sunscreens because what I brought from home really didn't perform for me and that was very clear you know like on the first couple of days it was very clear to me that that was the case and there was really a few reasons for that but I think it really came down to sweat resistance I think that's the most important thing because the sunscreens I brought were not sweat resistant and I was sweating so much because I am not acclimated to that type of heat right um, I was sweating so much that I was sweating right through that protective layer of sunscreen so while I may have been protected when I stepped out you know the first thing that day as soon as I started sweating my protection started to go away and that's something that's really important to remember about sunscreen and it's something that I've talked about for a few years now on my channel about choosing your sunscreen based on your climate where you live and what you're gonna be doing and how much sun exposure you're going to be getting but like this lesson was just like driven home so much for me um, based on this experience I did test out quite a bit of different things and these are just really the winners these are just the ones that really I went back to time and time again and it was for many reasons I mean the La Roche Posay I loved it because it's absorbed in, and dried on my skin really fast which is important because if you're slathering yourself head to toe in sunscreen body sunscreen you do not want to be like waiting around like in your underwear <laughs> trying to put your clothes on, um, waiting for your sunscreen to dry. Do you know what I'm saying, right? You want that to just get into your skin, create that protective layer as fast as possible so you can get going and maximize your day, especially when you're traveling, right? You don't have any time to waste. And um, with the Avene sunscreen, I just felt like it was a nice thick layer of sunscreen that I could feel on my face and that gave me so much comfort because like I said, the sunscreens that I brought from home did not work for me. So I was noticing a little bit more color um, on my skin, which there's nothing wrong with that, but it may be a sign that that sunscreen's maybe not working as hard for you. And so I was a little bit paranoid about sweating through my sunscreen. So there's just something nice about a thicker sunscreen that like gave me that reassurance as I was putting it on my skin. And I mean, it is made up of all new generation chemical filters. We know that those are really photostable. They're really hard working for your skin in a nice, thicker, slightly greasy, or slightly, it is a slightly greasier sunscreen texture. I just found this to be really, really awesome. And honestly, I didn't even mind the grease because I was already sweating so much that it just kind of like added to my do. Whatever you have to say to get yourself through, right? But I wanted to let you guys know, give you a little bit of an update. I am going to be offering my skincare consults again. Um, I did offer very limited spots in April and in May. And this is just an opportunity for you to send me like the, the products that you're using, the concerns that you have about your routine, and I can offer you some recommendations and some tips. This is not medical advice. I am not diagnosing your skin or anything like that. This is just me giving you some recommendations. Um, on products or maybe different order of products for you just trying to help you optimize your skincare routine so if that's something that sounds interesting to you if you've ever wanted to you know get my take on your skincare routine I do have the um, link uh, to those you can check out and you know get more information in the description box um, I only offer limited um, spots per month I'm gonna try to offer these every month um, but I have to tell you they take a lot of time I put a lot 
lot of like effort. I put a lot of my time. I put a lot of consideration into what I'm recommending for you. It, it is kind of individualized. So it does take a lot of time and I can really only take a few spots each month. So I want to let you know that those are available. If it, it is sold out, I'm um, just wait until the beginning of the next month because I'll try to open up um, the spots that I can for that month. So I've been very busy this summer. I've been summering really hard, right? I mean, I had a really long trip in Greece, which was magical. And then I came home and I, you know, kind of came into this chaotic mess of a move, but it's very, very exciting. And I'm really just embracing this new energy. I have to say that like, I just feel really refreshed and I don't mean it from the perspective of like, oh, I went on vacation and laid on a beach, which honestly, I was very busy on my vacation. <laughs> honestly, um, I didn't really lay on the beach that much, but I will say that changing up my routine, changing up my surroundings really shook things up for me. And it was so necessary because honestly, I feel like I have been in a bit of a rut um, in the last you know, two years, I mean, haven't we all, right? To some degree, maybe you feel that too, like you're just kind of stuck in the same old, same old, or maybe there's a certain type of routine um, or a certain way of doing things that really helps you get through the chaos of the last couple of years, but like maybe it's not serving you anymore. And that, that was definitely my experience. I just felt like I was kind of just stuck kind of like in this wheel, you know, and that's what actually really helped me get through the really trying times of the last couple of years. But I feel like I was stuck and I couldn't get off and it was actually time to get off. Like I don't, I don't need to be in this anymore. I don't need to be in that survival mode anymore. And I just wasn't really sure how to get out of it. And I'm not sitting here and advocating like go take a vacation or go move house or something like that's not realistic, right? But I guess what I'm just trying to say is that shaking things up, you know, whatever that means to you, whatever it takes to shake things up for you or just kind of break break that cycle or break that old routine, those old habits, maybe that rut. Try something new, which is something that I did encourage you to do in, I believe, the last favorites video. Just try something new. Try something scary. Um, you know, step outside of your comfort zone in your box just a little bit. Because when you do that, you shake things up. It might give you clarity. It might help you see things in a different way. But when you break that cycle, you know, it's so much easier to step out of that rut. It's so much easier to shake it off. And um, I feel like that's what's happened. I don't know if you felt a different vibe from me lately, um, but I definitely have. I feel like I'm kind of like, I'm still me, but I just feel like I'm shaking off that old dead skin. You know how a snake sheds its skin every so often? I feel like that's what's happening. I'm like, the much needed shedding is occurring and I'm just seeing that newer me. It's still me, it's just the next version emerging and I'm, I'm really happy to see her, you know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to share that moment with you and maybe you're feeling the same way and honestly, breaking that rut, shaking, shaking up the, the same old, same old, getting out of that, that routine. So helpful, really embracing that energy of summer to do so, so helpful and shake off that skin and, and greet the new person who is emerging. Ooh. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that favorites video. I am curious if there's skincare you've been using recently. That's made a big impression on you. So let us all know in the comments below. If you love the video, for some reason you're not subscribed to my channel, but you did make it all the way here to this point in the video, please don't go just yet. Do consider hitting subscribe before you click on to the next video. I do release a lot of new skincare um, videos throughout the week and I do shorts and, and things like that. So you may consider also turning on notifications so you can get your skincare fix throughout the week. I hope you are happy, healthy, and safe. I cannot wait to see you in the next video and I love you guys so much.